All right. Another aspect of the physics unit two syllabus requires for us to use this formula that we will, you know, uh, look at in great detail throughout this lesson. And as a matter of fact, the title of this lesson is resistivity right and if we look at the root word resist right that in itself would speak to stopping slowing down slowing down you name it Hence, well, the, 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 we get the word resistance. So whenever you're thinking about resistance, it is, in this case, resistance speaks to the, the slowing down of, of charge, right? So this is what resistance means in a nutshell, right? And when Ohms did his experiment, right, using a metallic conductor, he went a step further to to find out what other dimensions uh, could possibly affect the the resistance of a, of, a, of, a, of 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 any metal, so to speak. And with that, he basically came up with this. So let's let's go to the experiment a little to see what happened. So when Ohms was doing his experiment, he went ahead to to see what are some dimen dimensions that could affect the resistance so to speak right remember at first we 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 we, we were familiar with or we we became familiar with the fact that r is equal to v upon i where we know that the current value can affect the resistance right so we, we you know from that we understand that there are some parameters that can affect the resistance. Now he went. He made. Me, he went a step further by looking at the the wire itself. Now here we have a wire, and we know that inside of this wire, it, it is made up of atoms and particles and all those kind of other things, right? Now, Ohm's thought of saying, "Hey, what if I had a a length of wire, right?" with you know so let's imagine that he started off his experiment with say 10 centimeters of of wire with an cross-sectional area of 7.7 .7 centimeters square now what ohms did was to he varied the the, the these two uh dimension so to speak so he went ahead kept one constant and varied the other and with that he realized that if we look at our screen properly if i were supposed to vary my length so if i adjust my knob here i just a while ago increased the length of my my conduct my conductor or my wire what this showed me was that with any increase in the length of the conductor I would possibly increase the level of resistance right now from this it tell it also tells me that my resistance is directly proportional to to the length of the conductor and how we can better understand this is that whenever current is flowing through a conductor, right, we expect that some amount of charge is going to be slowed down, right, by virtue of collision. So, if I can uh, give me one second, let me just put this here
Let's imagine. Let's imagine that we had this piece of wire and we know that some amount of current will be flowing inside of the conductor. Now we know that current is, is, is the rate of flow of charge. So we're expecting that charges will be coming inside. Now these charges will collide with these particles that are inside of the conductor. Those collision, so to speak, will in fact slow down the the electrons which is which are the, which are the the, the the charge carriers and by slowing down the charge carriers right it means that you know the free electrons will at some point come to a stop in inside of the conductor right now for that reason guys if we were supposed to increase the length of that piece of conductor right now Remember, I know the material has particles inside of it that that is causing causing the the material to slow the causing the electrons to slow down. If I increase the length of that conductor, that is just giving me more 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 particles to collide with, and by time. I reach somewhere out, out, out at this end. I have little or no charge to pass through this end. So most of the charge would be bombarded by the particles inside of the, the, the conductor. Right? And that's how the resistance increases for a conductor when the length increases because the electrons have a longer way or, 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 or yeah, have a, have a much longer distance to travel to, right? Imagine you, yes, so. So versus let's 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 let, let's go back to this one. I want a much smaller. Uh, let me just bring down the length here. We're we're. Gonna make the length. I just want to make a comparison, guys. Yes. So, what I did just now was to ensure that the cross-sectional area remained the same. Right? So, both of them have the same cross-sectional area. Right? So, cross-sectional area. Let's assume that the cross-sectional area is the same. But this length, let's call this L2 or 2L, whereas this length from this end to this end is L. Clearly, there's a difference in, in, in terms of the length. Now, what this is telling us, guys, is that if we have the same current flowing inside of this conductor, right? Now, the electron that is coming from the, the power source right will have less collisions to 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 have right when it when 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 the conductor is of a much shorter length versus now having a longer conductor it means that i have more collisions to to i have more particles inside of my way so hence i'm going to have issues with these particles inside here and for that reason, we say that the resistance is going to decrease. Ah, yeah, the resistance is going to increase, I must say. 
So the resistance is going to be much higher here. So we expect that our resistor in this is going to be two times uh, larger than the resistance in this piece of uh, conductor here. Right? So that's the, the, the importance and the significance of having a longer length of wire. The longer the length of wire is, we expect that the greater the resistance is going to be versus having a much shorter wire. Good? So if you're going to design a situation or design a circuit or something of that nature, you want to limit the amount of uh, wires you would use so that you know you you won't run the risk of you know resisting the charge so that you don't get enough charge to uh power up your 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 other components okay so we we we, we have established that you, the length is perpendicular to the resistance so whatsoever change in in resistance right if it increases if the length increases the resistance increases. On the other end, we see where we will investigate that the area also has an impact on our, our resistance. And from the formula itself, we can, we can simply understand that the resistance is inversely proportional to the area. Once we have something in the denominator here, that is what it is telling us. And so what I have done now, I have kept two things constant. I haven't spoken about the resistivity as yet. I soon, I soon speak on that. So the resistivity is kept constant. I'm going to keep my length constant. Because there are times, guys, when you're doing experiments, you have to make one constant to see the effect that the other one has on the other. Right? So we are making the length constant here. Now, right? So... As a point, when my area is uh, 70.1 centimeters squared, my resistance is 0.667 ohms. Now, by increasing my area, let's look at what is happening to our resistance value. So, increasing area, we realize that it is decreasing. So, from that information, it tells us that with a wire that has a larger cross-sectional area with its length being constant my resistance is going to decrease and what this tells us now is that we will now have with a much larger cross-sectional area we will now have more space to navigate our charge that is flowing through this piece of conductor right that that's the significant of having a much thicker wire versus having a much thinner wire now if our area was very low right, right it means by 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 the, by the same factor that the area decreased by right yes so the area has an impact smaller wires has greater resistance so that will impede the flow of charge if you're if you want a situation like that then yes choosing a smaller cross-sectional area wire would definitely work for you now if you realize i did not alter my resistivity uh situation here now resistivity is a constant right it is a constant and resistivity is 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 what would i say it is unique to the type of material that we are using right so let's 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 go to our workbook here so by at, at first it says that the constant of proportion I don't remember the name of it. Uh, I, I, it's either row. I think it's row. Is is known 
as the resistivity of a material of the material is known as the resistivity of the material from which the wire is composed of right so so every material that we know of will have a, will have some amount of resistance right plastic even though that's not a conductor but it's going to have some resistance so copper uh nickel all those different type of elements has different resist resistivity and it is made it is mainly because of what the wire is made up of so if you have a if you have an alloy of, of, of wire or alloy metal then you expect that it will have a different resistivity of uh, another type of metal don't know they're saying that the resistivity is only is, is a property only of the material right so it, it it's it's not one of those dimensions that we can so to speak measure you understand yeah and it says that it does not depend on the dimension of the of the sample so despite the length of the the the, the, the copper wire the resistivity value will remain as such it will remain as what it originally was right and here we have a lovely table which we will end up using a few of those things so to speak now guys we, we we need to understand that resistivity has a unit right resistivity is equal to ohm meter right if we were to go ahead and transpose this equation here that says r is equal to to rho or resistivity times length divided by a right let's make resistivity the subject so a is dividing in the denominator so we need to take that into the numerator on the other side so a times r let's go again so we're transposing the a from the denominator to this part so a times r is equal to resistivity times length we need to get rid of the length so we divide on both sides so r upon l times a is equal to rho now remember area we're looking at units now area is meters square we know that resistor is ohms and this length here is also in meters so this is where we get the units to be uh, ohm meter as a rule. All right. So that's how we get that part here. here. So yes, guys. So different materials. So aluminum has this resistivity. If we look at it, let's see which one has the highest resist resistivity. Ah, silicon. Silicon is a semiconductor, so to speak, right? That has the highest resistivity yes it has the highest resistivity would it be yes uh, let me just check yeah it would have the highest resistivity based on what we're seeing here and we'll see why uh, you know we'll look at that a little bit further on when we are talking about semiconductor devices but let's look at this question it says which of the wires shown in figure 19.9 uh, .9 do you predict would have the greater resistance it says compare the the flow of electricity through the wires to through the wire to flow of water to the flow of water through a pipe it is easier for the for the water to flow through a long pipe a long tin pipe or a great broad one so look at previous Let, let's let's look at this so here we have two different types of um well yeah two two pieces of wires right we which one we expect that the the resistance would be much greater in i would go with this with the longer one right resistor would be much greater here so what is this part saying about water flow is it easier for the water to flow 
through a long a long um a long tin pipe or a short broad one so i would say it is much easier for the water to flow through a a short broad one right and that is because you have you have more space in in between it so less resistance in 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 regards to the water right but if you look at it from a charge standpoint it you know we expect that the greatest resistance would be for this one the one with the much longer length and a smaller cross-sectional area now guys all materials have resistance to the flow of charge now a potential difference across material cause three electrons so this is me this is this is this is this is the the, the notes part of it now guys right so a potential difference across materials cause free charge free charges inside to accelerate now it says as the charge moves through the material they collide with the atoms of the material which get in in their way they transfer some of some or all of their kinetic energy and then accelerate again it is this transfer of energy right on collision that cause electrical heating right so guys we expect some amount of heating up to take place because of that vibration those collision that is taking place energy will be transferred in that form right remember no, energy cannot be uh created nor destroyed but can be converted from one form to another now as you may thought the longer the wire the greater its resistance this is because the charge have further to go throughout the material there is there is a much greater uh, chance of collision with the atoms of the of the molecules and i did say that also the thicker the wire the smaller its resistance this is because there is a bigger uh, area for the charge for the charge to to to, to travel through right hence we will have less chance of collision. Good. So we can look at we can even look at this exp as at this uh, scenario in real life to say if I have the same amount of persons, right, standing in a more clustered way, right, the possibility of me passing through easily would be uh, reduced. I uh, would be reduced because of the amount of persons who are standing in that cluster versus now if the persons are more spread out I could go here here without interacting with anyone so it's the same concept this one now it's so hard because these persons are all, all up in my way you know I have to be like going around and all of that so yeah so that is a lovely question now no, no, lovely question. Well, lovely example from a from a different standpoint, just to understand. Now let's see if we can tackle this question here. It says an experimenter winds a coil from a three meter long from a three meter length of one millimeter diameter wire. It says A, what is the resistance of the wire at room temperature? It says B uh what length of 0 0.5 millimeter diameter constana constana wire would uh, would have the same resistance so let's see if we can uh, tackle a question like this so initially we have we, we are given some information firstly i know the length of the coil length of coil is three meters diameter I think with physics, physics guys is that we we have to we have to ensure that our quantities are in the SI units so take for example diameter in this case is one 
0 0.0 millimeter millimeter is not the SI units for, for, for distance or for length so we will have to convert that to get this in meters we know that a millimeter is a thousand times smaller than a, a meter so to correct this we would say 1 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, meters as a diameter good and uh, so that that's we have that information for the first part now as regards to copper we now have to go back to our, 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 our table copper resistivity value we need that value so let's see if we can scroll up to our table quickly now we'll just copy it and paste it down here because we might need it again Yeah, so resistivity for copper. This thing is blocking me. Why are you blocking me? Yeah, so copper has a resistivity of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8 uh, ohm meter. In order for us to find the resistance, guys we have to pull up our equation and uh, the, by the way the question says at room temperature when we in the next lesson or so we will look at how temperature can affect the resistance all right so it's important to note these things when it tells us that it's at room temperature so room temperature would you would not necessarily affect the resistance right so we don't have that uh what's the word i should use uh arrow come into play right here I mean uh, I'm trying to find another word but yeah I can't find it all right so yes resistance based on the equation we, we came up with just now is equal to resistivity times the length divided by the area now the area for the cross-sectional area for a, a circle is pi r square but we can, let me just write it. So cross-sectional area. I'm going to just shorten this for cross area. Is pi r square. Now, if we can recall, we know that a diameter is twice that of a radius. So one radius is equal to half of a diameter. right so r is equal to d upon 2 we can go ahead and replace r in our equation here for cross-sectional area so we're left with uh what is this again pi times d upon 2 all of that squared gives us what you look at what we're looking at now pi d squared all divided So we can cross area is equal to no, pi as what again? Pi is our calculator generally had that value have that value. Three point one four times the res the this the this the diameter rather, which is one So we have to focus on what's, what's happening in the bracket over here first. So let's just write about the 3.14 times. We know that 1 squared is, is 1. Whenever we have power to power, we add. So we're, we, we're left with, uh, in this case, it's going to be 
It's going to be um even though we're adding it's going to be a multiplication so to speak because it's supposed to get minus one here because they're gonna they're going to um add but if the plus sign comes here then you know because of this negative we end up getting minus one all of that divided by the four where is the calculator you can just go ahead and plug in the values in your calculator divided by four so we're looking no i think something is wrong uh this this power thing here i i, I did i did say it incorrectly so something is off right here so in this case we, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, multiply the power so not so not um we're going to multiply the power so this power is going to multiply this this power which will give us negative six right so if we have that no we should We're expecting to get something of this nature. We're supposed to get seven for the era. Era is going to equal to seven point eight five times ten to the minus seven meters square. And you can do it to to check and 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 let me know. All right divided by four yeah so let's check so we'll probably just need to review this whole power thing just to be on the safe side yeah so power to power like this you're going to multiply right all right so having that area we can go ahead and fill in that information Good. So we can now go go back to our, our, our resistance question to to find the resist the, the resistance for for copper. So yes, our resistivity is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8. We know our length to be 3 meters. All of that divided by the area, which is uh, 7.85 times 10 to the minus 7. Having said all of this, we can now come up with an answer, right? So 1.7, uh, 10 to the minus 8, multiplied by 3, divided by the answer that I got for the... So yes, we should get a value of... of 0 0.065 uh, ohms this resistor resistance value is very low right so from this it can tell us that the cross-sectional error was was a, was a, was a very big cross-sectional error for that piece of wire copper wire you know so yeah, so copper wire is really good at using for for conducting electricity because of the the, 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 the limited amount of resistance that it produces. Alright. But there is another part of the question that wanted us to 
understand or to find out is it at what length of 0 0.5 millimeters diameter of constant uh, wire would have the same resistance so if it's a same resistance so this is the resistance that we we have just found out but they want to know what length of that wire would produce the same re, uh, resistance from a different wire right so for that question we can say that resistance because resistance are the same we can use this formula to find the the length so r so r of constant and constant and is equal to r of copper we know them we know the value for, for 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 the resistance here so we can easily go ahead and write it it is as such then our equation would be we know that constant and has a resistivity of 4.9 based on the table here guys 4.9 times 10 to the minus 7 times the length divided by the area now we don't know the length we know the area the diameter we don't know the area fully but we know the diameter the diameter was given as 0 0.5 I think it's 5 5 or 5 let me go back and check yeah 5 uh, millimeter right which is in centimeters not centimeter in in uh, meters would be 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters so this is the diameter and we can go ahead and find the area area is equal to pi d square divided by 4 3.14 times d which is 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 raised to the power of 2 divided by 4 when we do that we should get a value of era equal to 1.96 times 10 to the minus 4 meters meter square so we now know that so we can transpose our equation by saying 0 0.065 times the era which is 1.9 times 1.96 1.96 times 10 to the minus 7 all divided by 4.9 times 10 to the minus 7 is going to equal to the length with this we can do our mathematics right we know that this and this is going to go because this is negative 7 i can bring the negative 7 the 10 to the negative 7 into the numerator and it becomes 10 to the positive 7 so we're left with 0 0.065 times 1.96 out of that divided by 4.9 And let's see with that being said we should get a length of roughly 0 0.0226 meters or we can say it is 2.6 centimeters all right so that is the length that the wire of constant should be in order for the resistance to be the same of that of the the copper wire all right so this is it on resist resistivity and on resistance for this lesson if we have any concerns or if there is, there is something that is not clear feel free to to point that out to me all right as a matter of fact there, are, there there's another way we could attempt the the other alternative to, to find
the, 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 the last part of the question, but another time, if, we, if that is so required for us to do. So in the next lesson, I believe we will look at, you know, how, you know, the effect of temperature on the resistance. All right. So stay tuned for more lessons, guys. All right.